Okay, so let's first look at how the binary search works. I've got a, a list here of names and a list of emails, and I'm going to find a person's name, and I'm going to bring back its email address. So let's say the person I was looking for was Ben. Now, when we do a binary search, we have a starting point, let's call that first, uh, end point, let's call that last, and then the midpoint, which would be this one here. So we look for Ben at the midpoint, and it's not correct. So we have to decide whether Ben is, um, if Ben is bigger than the midpoint, and he's not. So we can then remove all of this lot from the list, and the midpoint becomes the end point. Okay, and then we find the midpoint again, which is here. And we look to see if Ben is in the midpoint, and Ben is in the midpoint, and we found it. So let's do another example. So let's assume we were looking for Peter. So I'm looking for Peter. Again, we've got our first point, our last point, and our midpoint. We look in the midpoint. We say, is, is uh, Peter bigger than the midpoint? This time it is, so we, uh, we lose that lot. Um, this time, the midpoint becomes the first point. And again, we find the midpoint, which is here. Is Peter in the midpoint? Yes, it is. And we've now found it. OK, so let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. Um, in this case, we're looking for um, X, which doesn't appear in the list. So as before, we get, we run it through. This becomes first. This becomes last. This becomes mid. We check to see if the X is greater than Brian. It is. So we move our midpoint becomes our first, so move it forward, and we get a new midpoint in the middle. We check Peter, again, it's greater than um, Peter, so once again, we move our midpoint forward, sorry, our um, first point forward, and we get a new midpoint. Now the midpoint and the last are now at the same place, so we check to see if it's here, and it's not. So we can't move it forward anymore, therefore it's not found. So that would be a case of not finding something using a binary search. OK, so I've been asked a few times recently about doing a, a binary search using Flowgrithm. So I've done a, a very simple example here. Um, it's similar um, to the Ivy Tech um, question where you've got to find the telephone number and um, of a person you're searching for, but in this case I've done um, email address and there's a few other little alterations I've made to it so it's not exactly the same as, the, as their one. I think theirs is the um, S10 question, this one here, um, that I've been sent. So I've not done a direct copy, um, you'll see where the differences are, but it should give you a good starting point. So I've started off by declaring my um, five here, my five names and my five email addresses. Um, I've declared a search. I've declared um, the integer for the email, which will be the position that comes back. Um, just here, I've got my five people. And I've got my five email addresses. I, uh, I ask who you want to find, take it in. And then I call my binary search function we'll look at in a second. So I'm going to send the binary search function the list of names, this list up here, the name I'm looking for, and the size of the list of names, so we've got a position. It calls that function, it goes into the binary search. Okay, here's the binary search. Um, it goes through the binary search routine. Uh, if you look um, on the video of, alongside this, an explanation of how the binary search is working. So it comes through finds the midpoint, um, if it's not there, is it bigger or smaller, so we're increasing the, the first or we're decreasing the last, moving up or down the list, chopping out the bits as the binary search works, until 
it um, either finds it, or if it finds it, it's true. It returns the midpoint back, returns that. If it's not true, midpoint was the position was originally set for minus one, so it return the minus one. So we go back into. It's going to be plenty of time to have a look at that. So there we go. So it goes back into main. At this point here, we've returned either the position or minus one. If it's minus one, it's not found. If it's the position, it will give us the email. So let's run it and see what happens, and we'll do it as a step by step. So we'll run through it, and if we get up at the same time, the uh, the variables. So you can see the variables here. So if we step through it, can we get that side by side? Sure, we can. Oops. Let's go back to the main program and let's step by step through the main program. So there's the initialization of the variables. We're going to look for, let's look for Brian. And we'll see as it steps through. Same step. There's the midpoint. So as it's working through and it returns Brian's email address. We run it again. But this time, look for somebody who doesn't exist. As you'll see as it steps, as it steps through. somebody we don't know and as it steps into the thing there we go we can see it hunting it's not going to find it. it takes half hour at a time doesn't find it returns the minus one which gives us the not found so that's a fairly straightforward example of a binary search and um, I hope you find that useful so a quick look at the code, so there's the code for the actual call, declaring the array, calling it here, and output, and here's the actual code for the binary search itself. Okay, This is the bit that's finding the midpoint, halving it, either going up or down as it, as it does its uh, halving, moving the, f the, f the first forward or bringing the last back towards the middle until it finds it. So there you go, I hope you find that useful. Feel free to send me any other um, questions you have.